our eighth City Club report this evening is on Measure 89, Equal Rights Amendment. Des Culpet, Chair of the Committee, will present the report and move for adoption of the report's majority recommendation. She will be followed by Tamara DeRitter, committee member, who will present the minority report and move to amend the motion by substituting the minority recommendation. Yes, we are going to do this again. The meeting will then be open for debate and vote by City Club members. I will now turn the podium over to Des Culpit and Tamara DeRitter. Hello everyone. Tamara's actually going to join me on stage here. That's just how our committee rolls. Um, so, <laughs> thank you. Um, so as chair of the research committee on the proposed Equal Rights Amendment, again my name is Des Culpit. I was chairing this lovely committee of wonderful and educated individuals. And I am in fact a woman standing before you. <laughs> I know. Um, as the chair of the research committee on the proposed Equal Rights Amendment, or Measure 89, I'm here today to share a research recommendation of a no vote. That quickly brings me to the heart of the conversation this evening. Please know I am surprised by our recommendation of a no recommendation, but I encourage you to hear our committee's research outcomes. In addition to interviews with subject matter experts and recent academic research, we worked as a committee to define how we would value facts when they were presented. Our ultimate goal was to evaluate if this amendment would make a positive change in Oregon. We found that this amendment would make no change in Oregon overall to existing rights afforded to Oregonians. And I am from the Midwest originally, so if I say Oregon wrong, I apologize. I know, I could hear it already. Proponents of this measure argue that its passage by Oregon voters would amount to a symbolic victory for the national women's rights movement and galvanize support for an amendment to the U.S. Constitution. A federal amendment would bring all states up to the 21st century expectations of equality. Here in Oregon, however, our state constitution already affords men, women, communities of color, and victims of discrimination the highest levels of protection for equal rights. We on your research committee strongly favor a federal constitutional amendment. Regardless, City Club and the majority of our research committee firmly support equal rights for all people. The committee concluded, however, that Measure 89 would not increase protections already afforded to Oregonians. We ask that those considering this recommendation not consider, consider this amendment as a vehicle for the passage of a national amendment. Passage of Measure 89 in Oregon would only reiterate to the nation for a third time that Oregon is a staunch supporter of equal rights. Since 1972, when the proposed Federal Equal Rights Amendment, or ERA as we know it, was approved by both houses of Congress, Oregon has twice ratified the Federal ERA and held support for equal rights at the highest level. The Oregon Constitution already includes a section that broadly and strongly guarantees equal treatment for women, as well as equal treatment among other groups. Oregon's constitutional provisions that protect individual rights against infringement by state and local law is Article 1, Section 20. No law shall be passed granting to any citizen or class of citizens privileges or immunities, which, upon the same terms, shall not equally belong to all citizens. So that's Article 1, Section 20, already in the amendment. Under a 1984 decision called Hewitt v. Safe, the Oregon Supreme Court has interpreted this provision to provide Oregonians with the highest level of protection against sex-based discrimination. What does that actually mean? So, it means my iPad will crash on me. <laughs> so, ooh, <laughs> I know, technology. When a law is challenged in a US court, the court typically applies one of the three levels of scrutiny in assessing validity of the challenged law. Strict scrutiny is the most stringent of these standards. It is used to assess the legitimacy of laws that affect the most fundamental and constitutionally protected rights. The Oregon Supreme Court has long interpreted Article 1, Section 20 to require the application of strict scrutiny to any state or local laws that discriminate based on sex. 
This is the strongest standard of protection recognized under state law. Further, our committee opposes using our state constitution as a way to communicate symbolic messages. The Oregon Constitution is a foundational legal document that is too often burdened with unnecessary or ad hoc amendments. Essentially, this amendment would put the right words in the wrong document. It is up to the proponents of the measure, who I'm sure we'll hear from tonight, um, to show why their amendment would be necessary or beneficial, and currently we have found them to fail to do so. We recommend that voters should amend our state's fundamental legal document only when there is a need for substantive change to the law and not for symbolic value. In conclusion, Article 1, Section 20 currently operates as an ERA for Oregon, equal rights for all. Our research has shown that the amendment before Oregon voters this fall, Measure 89, would not change or improve the rights that currently exist for women and all people in Oregon. We also recognize and would like to highlight that certain disadvantaged groups could potentially find their rights less protected than they currently are if Measure 89 is added and sex is the focus of the state amendment. Our committee has heard from expert witnesses that Article 1, Section 20 is already an equality-based amendment in our state constitution, that it is inclusive of all rights of men and women in our state and it protects communities of color and other victims of discrimination. Measure 89 does not do so, and therefore we recommend a no vote on this amendment. So I move for adoption of the report's majority recommendation. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Tamara DeRitter. I am the minority. And I request to amend the motion made by the majority spokesperson, Des, and I rec recommend that the City Club instead adopt the mi minority report. Now, if you listen closely to what she had stated, Article 20, is that right? Article, Article, one, section Article 1, Section 20 applies only to citizens. This would apply to everyone. Now, think about that. How many people are getting driver's cards? Okay. This would apply to everyone. Four former Supreme Court justices disagree with the ACLU's opposition to this measure. They stated, we need the ERA in the Constitution. This amendment will protect the biological differences between the sexes that is not currently covered by case law. Although the courts currently use strict scrutiny when sex is an issue, Case law is fluid and interpretations are narrowed or superseded over time. The Oregon Constitution offers the most secure sanctuary for protecting sex equality. This is not just symbolism, it is graduation. There will be no harm to the existing protected classes and the, with the support of Measure 89. This interpretation was provided by the Oregon Legal Council of the, for the state, Senate, uh, state legislature and reaffirmed by the four former Oregon Supreme Court justices. New Mexico Supreme Court recently used their ERA to offer protections to reproductive rights funding. Other states have not been so lucky. Over the past three years, the movement to restrict reproductive education and health care has grown more active. Studies show that between 2011 and 2012, there was nearly 300% increase in constitutional challenges to reproductive rights across the United States. Now is the time to adopt the Oregon ERA. We have the luxury here in Oregon to currently have a Supreme Court that is supportive of equity and equality. Use this opportunity wisely. Adopt the Oregon ERA now, and we will have the opportunity to establish solid interpretations for sex equality in Oregon Constitution and secure these protections for generations to come. Thank you. Oh, I'll make my motion again. I uh, make my motion to amend Dez's emotion, motion, emotion, and uh, replace the majority report with the minority report. Second. Second. 
the microphone to my right is labeled yes. Yes on measure 89, which is in the minority report. No on measure 89 is the majority report. Will the following city club members please uh, make a line behind the no microphone. Jack McNichol, Ilana Pertlgeny, Kezia Warner, Byron Palmer, Sharon Greenfield, Alex Roth. And the yes microphone, Samuel Metz, Wynne Wakala, Julia G, I can't read her name, James Offsink, John DiLorenzo, Leanne DiLorenzo, and Pat McCormick. Into the really up close. We have tossed a coin and we will first recognize a member supporting the ballot measure. So that would be Samuel Metz. Thank you. I'm Sam Metz. I'm a city club member. I've served on a research committee before and understand the challenge of attempting a consensus on an issue that is contentious and highly charged. I'm also a physician. Attacks on women's access to health care are real, they are ongoing, and they are legal. They are legal in Oregon, they're legal in the United States. I urge city club members to vote yes on the ballot measure, no on the majority report, and unhappily no on the minority report. The minority report is an eloquent and powerful statement in favor of the ERA, but mixes in same-sex marriage. No one who is attempting to think about this issue should think that voting for the ERA is a vote for same-sex marriage, and the city club should not promote that confusion. Yes on ballot measure 89, no on the majority report, more, no on the minority report. Thank you. I'm Kezia Warner, and I was a member of the committee. And one of the things that I'd like to bring up is the process that we did when we came together as a committee. Most of us came together and we really were struggling with this issue because we all felt very strongly about it. It's an emotional issue. It's an emotional issue probably for everyone in this room. And the thing that we had to do is take a look at the facts, the research, meet with subject matter experts, and put aside emotions, put aside any sort of personal or political agendas in order to come up with our recommendation. So what we did is we looked at all of the facts that are out there, we looked at other states' ERAs, and what we came away with is really trying to dig into, is there a problem in the state of Oregon, and is this the right thing to address and fix it? And what we came away with the research is that we were not able to locate that problem here in the state of Oregon because we have the highest protections legally already for, the, or, for Oregonians. And so we found ourselves struggling with how do we address an issue that is really emotional for most people. Is that 15 seconds? So I know that what you'll hear is going to be a lot of emotional feelings that people will talk about tonight, but we grounded our recommendation in research with, subject, with over a dozen subject matter experts, and we recommend that you vote no against measure, ballot measure 89. It is something that there is a, a solution that is seeking a problem here for the state of Oregon. Wynne Wakala, City Club member, and I am a woman. Yes. <laughs> I have seen what's going on around this country. Women's rights are coming under attack. There are women who are trying to take us back to the 1950s, keep us pregnant and barefoot. And I don't care if it's symbolic. 
We need to vote yes on this and let the whole United States Senate and House of Representatives know that we are in favor of women's rights and we don't want to go backwards. We need to do this. Thank you. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Jack McNichol, and I am a City Club member and member of the Research Committee voting in the majority. Um, I, I would actually start off with saying that I agree with my fellow club member that women's rights are consistently under attack in the United States, and it's a very, very serious problem that needs to be addressed. And my, my concern is that this ballot measure will do nothing to address it. This ballot measure will not change legal protections for women in the state of Oregon. Um, and it's, it has no demonstrated positive impacts. We, in talking to the proponents and talking to legal experts, we found that it would have no, ch it would change the legal status of um, sex discrimination in Oregon in absolutely no way. We also heard from a number of witnesses that there are small but not inconsiderable risks um, to other populations that are protected under Article 1, Section 20. Article 1, Section 20 protects a broad range of categories of citizens. Um, and by protecting women separately, we take this sort of uh, mixed approach to protecting pr suspect classes in Oregon, and it's, it's a dangerous precedent to set. Thank you. Hello, I'm James Offsink, a City Club member, and this is, I think, my first time addressing the entire club, so uh, I think it's an important, a, a very important issue. Um, I really respect uh, the work that comes out of and goes into these research reports, and uh, I definitely want to you know, tip my hat to the entire committee, um, both the majority and the minority, for the great work that they did. Having said that, I do disagree uh, with the majority opinion, which uh, seems like it's based on two major uh, assumptions, or, or two major points. The first is, is that Oregon already has, uh, the, and we've heard this again and again, the strongest possible level of protection um, for women, and, or uh, for, for everyone. And you know, I'm not an attorney, uh, but I know that the four uh, f former Supreme Court justices uh, are attorneys, and you know the chief, uh, you know, c call it, uh, deciders of the law in their day. And when they say that you know case law is a weak precedent or provides a weak precedent and a weak protection, I'm uh, in inclined to believe them. And secondly, that we shouldn't put uh, important uh, symbolic measures in our Constitution. And I think that our Constitution is exactly the place to embody the things that we hold more, most important. And I, I'd like to remind people that at the beginning of our founding, uh, you know, we also prohibited African Americans from moving into Oregon. And in 1927, we removed that. Uh, thank you. Good evening, Ilana Guinea, City Club member. Uh, very briefly, because you've heard much from both sides, while I respect the concerns brought up from the minority report, I am concerned even more about what symbolic wins do to stymie real change in the form of laws and measures that could actually address inequalities for women and other groups in Oregon. This may be a problem nationally, it may be that case law is not as strong as the Constitution, but we have an opportunity to address real issues that women face in our state, that other groups face in our state, and symbolic wins do nothing to help build momentum for that. Rather, they make people feel that they've done enough when in fact they have not. Good evening, everyone. My name is John DiLorenzo. I'm a lawyer. I'm a partner at Davis Wright Tremaine. I've been a litigator for 34 years, uh, mostly in the governmental arena. I am a strong proponent for Measure 89. Measure 89 establishes a formal express policy in the Constitution that says no unequal treatment, period. Measure 89 will greatly assist efforts to eliminate the pay disparity which stubbornly persists in our state system. <laughs> Believe me, as a litigator, I would be one of the first to invoke it and to use it. It will help. It will help cure that disparity. Measure 89 harms no one. Form, four esteemed former justices, Justice DeMunis, Justice Gillette, Justice Riggs, Justice Van Humesen, Legislative Council, and the measure itself says so. Here's what the judges 
said about the opponents to, thank you, the opponents of the measure. They are mistaken to oppose passage of the Oregon ERA. We believe that passage of the Oregon ERA will acknowledge the contributions and importance of more than 50% of our citizens by finally providing women express recognition in our state's most important document, its Constitution. <laughs> Vote yes on 89. Hi there, my name is Sharon Greenfield. I'm a city club member and I was also on the uh, research committee. I wanted to mention that Mr. DiLorenzo, I don't think he mentioned that he was a, um, not only a proponent of, but he also paid for this measure, um, FYI. Um, one of the things I wanted to reiterate was the fact that this <laughs> is not going to, um, it's not gonna affect the federal ERA in any way. Um, we've already passed, we've already ratified twice, Oregon has ratified um, the, the federal ERA. This isn't going to have any effect um, in that. And it's kind of a solution seeking a problem. Um, and the other thing is um, we've, um, we've looked at kind of the case law and constitutional language. We've talked to um, our, our subject matter experts and they're specifically on the constitutional law research side, not on the say, um, political side, maybe, so maybe somebody who's a Supreme Court, um, former Supreme Court judge might have a kind of a political lean in how they're viewed in the public eye. The people that we talk to, they're not in the public eye. They just look at the dry, straight law. Thanks. Hi, I'm Leanne DiLorenzo, and I first must tell you that any time your partner says it's okay to spend a massive load of cash on a quality instead of a kitchen remodel, you say, hell yes. <laughs> Number one, this is not about emotion. It's about law. It's about the summary of ballot measure 89. Ellen Rosenblum, our attorney general, actually has written there is no provision in this constitution, A. B. Dexter Johnson, Legislative Council, opined on the exact same language in the last legislative session, and he said, does not diminish other rights. There's a reason Dexter opined this way, because the third clause in our measure actually says, does not diminish other rights. Lastly, four Supreme Court justices, with respect, and with respect to the entire body of the city club, should be respected, and I will tell you, they've done many great things for a lot of us who are happen to be uh, very ideologically aligned. Lastly, I should leave you with this. I'm not gonna tell you anything new about the Equal Rights Amendment. I can tell you that women do not have the highest protection, it's in case law. It can be overturned and so on. It is not the same as having written, uh, being written in the Constitution. Please vote yes on Measure 89. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Byron Palmer. I was, I'm a member of the City Club and I was the research advisor for this thing. When we started off, I thought that this is a slam dunk. Everyone's gonna support the ERA. We know that there are problems with protection for women in this state, but as we went through it, we found that this was not going to solve the problem. We looked at the uh, or I looked into whether or not passage of an ERA at the state level did anything about wage inequality. It does not. We looked at whether or not it offers protections for um, biological, for reproductive rights. It does not. It has been used successfully in some states. It has been used unsuccessfully in other states. So the bottom line is the ERA is not going to solve the issues that we have with women in this state. We need something else. And this does not add to the Oregon Constitution any protections that aren't already there as established by case law. So thank you very much. Hi. Hi, I'm Patty Farrell, a City Club member, and I simply want to say I know there's been a lot of talk about whether this is a symbolic vote or not, but I want to say what kind of a symbolic vote is it if we vote no? What, does that, what, what message does that send to our daughters? 
What message does that send to our community? What message does that send to the United States? I think Oregon should vote yes on this measure. Hello, I'm Alex Roth. I'm a City Club member and also a member of this committee recommending a no vote on Measure 89. And uh, just speaking to that last point right there, we uh, thought carefully about that point ourselves because all of us on our committee, the minority and majority, all feel very strongly in favor of equality of rights between both genders and sexes and all different groups. And uh, we considered that question as well and our conclusion was uh, the opposite conclusion. Um, Oregon has already had a similar measure that's gone forth in the legislature and been defeated for some of the similar reasons that we describe. A similar measure has been proposed about 20 years ago and also was defeated for similar uh, reasons and uh, it was a slightly different measure, but same general idea. No bad consequences flowed from that that we were able to identify. Um, the ACLU is one of the strongest proponents of equal rights um, across the state and the nation and has been for decades and generations and uh, they have opposed this amendment and certainly the reasons we oppose this amendment are because it doesn't, uh, would not rectify any inequalities or promote any additional rights and will put um, excess things in our constitution that we felt are not, that the constitution is not an appropriate venue. So for these reasons we still oppose the amendment and feel no harm would come from voting against it. Thank you for all of your comments. The debate has concluded and we now vote on the motion to substitute the report's minority recommendation to vote yes on measure 89. At this stage of our proceedings, neither a count vote nor a written ballot is required. A simple majority vote determines whether or not the club supports the minority report and substitutes it for the majority report. Please raise your ballot if you agree with the motion to substitute the minority report recommending a yes vote on measure 89. So we better count them. Yeah. Please uh, keep your ballots until the count is uh, keep your ballots raised until the count is complete. No ballot. Well, you'll have to vote online. Please keep your hands raised. This is why you lift weights, people. Okay, we are going to move on to the next vote, which is, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. I'm okay. It's all okay. Please raise your ballot if you disagree with the motion to substitute the minority report recommending a yes vote on Measure 89. Keep them raised. Keep your hands up. 
Ballots up, please. Oh, I'm sorry, you can put your hands down. <laughs> sorry. By a vote of 56 to 42, City Club of Portland has voted to substitute the minority <laughs> recommendation <laughs> to vote yes on Measure 86. We will now vote on whether to adopt the report on the measure as amended, recommending a yes vote on measure 86. Oh, I'm sorry, it said 86 and I changed it to 89 everywhere else. 89. No, no more heckling, whoever is heckling out there. City Club, are we ready? Quiet back there. Madam Chair, would you please explain the meaning of an agree vote? Does that mean agree with the minority report and vote yes on 89? Yeah, motion to amend. On the motion to amend, which is to vote yes on measure 89. Correct. If I circle agree, it means vote yes on 89. Is that correct? That's correct. Adopting the report as amended, it was amended to recommend a yes vote on measure 89. Are we ready? Okay, City Club of Portland has voted to substitute the minority recommendation to vote yes on measure 89. We will now vote on whether to adopt the report on the measure as amended, recommending a yes vote on measure 89. Go ahead and vote. I'm going to read this again because that was a, a bit of a, that was a, uh, a lot of um, testifying there. So I'm going to read this again. A simple majority vote determines whether or not the club supports the report. The final tally will include ballots cast in person, in person today and ballots cast online between August 21 and August 25. The results of all votes will be announced online on August 26. Oh, my team left. I was going to ask what time they were going to announce that, but they're gone. If you vote today, please indicate your vote on your ballot. And as a reminder, if you turn in your ballot when you leave today, what happens? You will not receive an email. Thank you to Des, Tamara, to the committee, and all of you for your hard work tonight. <laughs>